Thank you. Just share the, the slides. Um, so yeah, just following what you just said, Jamie, I think we all look after our families and our businesses. We spend a lot of time in it, but we don't often get our businesses to look after ourselves. And I think that's something I'm going to focus on a little bit today. And hopefully everybody in the room will be able to walk away with, with something to, to focus on. And perhaps like you also mentioned earlier, just take a little bit of action. Um, so this, I've just been a member of Circles for just over a year this month. Um, I don't know where that time has gone, but it's absolutely flown. And like Sab said earlier, met some wonderful people. And it's great to, to be part of this today. And thank you for the opportunity. So, as I said, um, we look after our businesses, we look after our families, but we need to get our businesses to look after ourselves as well. So what, what makes up a business? Well, that could be a sole trader, one man band, it could be a partnership, um, it could be a limited company. There's lots of different varieties of companies, but that's essentially what, what defines a business. And are you making the most of the perks that are available for being a business owner? And um, there are various tax breaks that the government allow to business owners. There are lots of different allowances. I am not gonna go into technicals today and send you all to sleep, um, but think about getting your business to do more for you. And if anyone recognises this, this is from one of my favourite books. And I was very disappointed to hear that Jamie um, hasn't, wasn't a fan of this book. He thinks he's going to revisit it or, or at least go for the snapshot. But this is uh, from Rich Dad Poor Dad. And this was the first book that my dad gave me. It was a big influence on me and why I do what I do. Um, so Anne mentioned this earlier as well about trading time for money. So that is what defines the employee and the self-employed sections of this quadrant. Most of us in the room, I'm assuming, will be predominantly in, in the self-employed quadrant, maybe a little bit in the investor side. Um, but to be a true business owner, is, that just means you own the business. You don't put a lot of time into it, but it does deliver you the profits that you want. Um, so I guess my question to you guys is, where would you really like to be? And in the future, and, and to sort of give you a different way of thinking about that, imagine for a second that you were to retire tomorrow. The kids have flown the nest, you've paid your mortgage off, Imagine you were to retire tomorrow. Think about the things that you'd like to do, your hobbies. Um, what car would you like to drive around in? How many holidays would you want per year? And we're all guilty of focusing on the present and sometimes even dwelling on the past. But what a lot of us don't focus on is, is the future. And that's where it's my job to coach people um, to try and achieve the things that they want in the future. So part of my goal is uh, to be within these two categories here. And I'm already, I've already got feet in both camps. And I'll continue to do that because I love what I do. And I'm happy to trade my time to help other people achieve their dreams. So it's taxing times. It's, we're coming up to the tax year end. Um, 2021 was, was tough due to the pandemic for a lot of businesses. Um, but if, if a lot of you in the room have done quite well and you've had a good year, you might be sat there thinking, I'm a bit worried about the tax bill that I'm about to get. Um, I've done better than expected. I might just leave some, some profits sat in the business so that I don't have to pay any tax on it. Well, there are plenty of things that you can do in order to extract some of that profit without um, having a huge tax bill. And you just need to talk to somebody, a professional. Um, for those of you in the Midlands, we've got Alex on the call today as well, who does something very similar to myself. So make sure you're making the most of the tax year end. So what kind of things am I talking about? So we've got um, 20,000 pounds a year ISO allowance. So if you don't use it, you'll lose it. So we can all put 20 grand a year into an ISA. We can put up to 40,000 pounds a year into a registered pension scheme or multiple pensions. Different types of ISAs, the two that were most commonly known are cash ISAs and stocks and shares ISAs, which means the money is invested. And that's where you've got the opportunity to, to grow. So as we all know, the interest rates are shocking at the minute. And Russell touched on inflation earlier. So inflation in the UK at the minute is just above 5%. So to give you a quick example of what that means, if you've got £10,000 in the bank and you're thinking, I'm going to buy that car that I've always wanted next year in 12 months time, and it's £10,000. Fast forward 12 months, you'll still have £10,000 in the bank, but the car, the price will have gone up to 10500 because of inflation. So the, the buying power of your money, if it's just sat in the bank or in your business as, as an extracted profit, it's doing more harm than good. So you need to consider doing something slightly different. 
So which way to, do you go? And again, that's why just having a chat with, with somebody who knows what they're doing can guide you in the right direction. You can also invest in junior ISAs. So if you've got children, you can put £9,000 a year into a cash ISA for a child. Currently just set one up for my little boy. I'm putting £100 a month into it, which is mainly the child benefit that we get. Um, so £100 a month for the next 18 years. And once he gets to age 21, hopefully he should have about £50,000 sat in that account. Imagine what that will do for him starting his adult life. I wish I had that. And I'm sure a lot of us in the room today wish we did as well. And that's literally just £100 a month. So moving on to retirement planning. So saving for a pension is hard, but retiring without a pension is far harder. What's shocking is the average pension of someone that retires in the UK, man or woman, is around about £80,000. And to put that into plain English, that's equivalent to having about an income of about £2,500 a year. So it's just over £200 a month. It's nothing. And that's in today's money. So if you were to retire tomorrow and you go back to all those things that you imagined earlier when I said to think about what you want to do, your state pension's 9200 and you've got £2,400 a year from your private pension, it's not even £12,000. Do you think that's going to buy you all those dreams? I don't think so. So many of you in the room might have already fared better and, and have done something about it, but it's never too late to, do, to make a start and change. We're all living longer. So this is another important reason why we need to save a little bit more. Um, by 2062, the average life expectancy for a woman will be over 90, which is a long, long time. And with a man, it'll be just under 90, it'll be about 87. Look at the, the graph on screen. So with medical advances, we are all living longer. And if you had a pension, just want to give you a quick example. What would your pension fund be worth? So if you had £300,000 at age 40, you wanted to retire at 65, I got 25 years. If that grew at 5% per year, you'd have just over a million pounds. To put that into perspective, if you've left the job and your pension has just sat there frozen doing nothing, you don't know how, how much is in it, you don't know how it's invested, you don't know what the performance is like, let's say that performance was only 2.5% per year, then the pension would only be worth 560,000. So it's, it's just over half of what it would be worth if it was invested correctly. And that's a huge, huge difference. What, what would an extra 500,000 pounds do for your retirement? So why should you invest into a pension? So moving back to your business, it's, you get tax relief on your contributions. You can get, depending on what tax bracket you're in, it's 20, 40 or 45%. You can get free money from the government just for paying into a pension. So if you want to know how that works, um, do a bit of Googling or have a look, have a chat with myself and I'll explain it to you. It grows tax-free. There's only two investments that can grow tax-free at the minute, and that's an ISA and a pension. And it provides you with a nice lump sum when you retire and you can do all those wonderful things that you imagined. You can also invest into a children's pension. So if you've got children of yourself, they might have grandparents who've got surplus money, um, you can contribute to a child's pension. And you can put to a maximum of 3,600 a year in. But once the government have given you the free money on the tax relief, you actually only need to put 2,880 into a pension, which is a little over 200 pounds a month. So we're not talking huge sums of money. Downside is they can't access that till 55. The upside is if you do that for your child, I guarantee that they'll never have to worry about a pension. So the four pillars of tax efficient investing, I'm just going to concentrate on the two on the left because the two on the right get quite sophisticated and is not for today's talk. Um, so as I've always mentioned, ISAs and pensions are your two main pillars to concentrate on. And I'm not just talking about cash ISAs. So if you're thinking of putting some money to one side, that would be your starting point. And I'd also consider to get, to get some free tax relief from the government and start putting into a pension or do it if you've already got a pension uh, have a review do you know how much is in it do you know where what, whether it's working for you or not and just have a look and just to summarize just as a key takeaway is just remember you can put twenty thousand pounds a year into an isa you can put nine thousand pounds a year into a junior isa and you can put up to £40,000 a year into a registered pension. You can even go back three tax years if, and look at what you've not contributed from those. Um, so without getting any more technical than that, 
my takeaway for you today is think about what you want to do when you retire and ask yourself, am I on track to achieve that? And if the answer is, I don't know or no, then just take some action and look into it a little bit more. And if you want some help on that, I'd be more than happy to have a chat. And as we're approaching the tax year end, we uh, might take, also got another takeaway is we're doing free tax health checks at the minute. So if you want to try and reduce your tax bill, if you want to have a quick chat with me over a coffee, um, I will put the link in the follow up email and you can book that in. Um, so, yeah, that was pretty tough to follow uh, Mel and, and Saad there today, um, but hopefully you'll have some takeaways from that. And that's it for me. Thank you.